Today's video is on engine water pump replacement on a 2014 Range Rover Sport supercharged. It was established by the owner that the coolant level light was coming on continuously after topping off and under a bit of investigation there was evidence of coolant leaking down into the uh, lower engine uh, compartment and at closer inspection there uh, is visual uh, leakage from around the water pump area. So today we're going to start off by removing the components that surround the area of the water pump. We're going to start with the intake plenum, the air intake plenum rather, which can be a little bit tricky. Uh, it has a couple of pipes on it that has some tight clips to remove. You have to take your time so not to break them. And then it opens up a whole lot more for access. I mentioned before about the pipes and clips that are hard to remove. This is the clip that is hard to access and remove. It's always good to spray it perhaps with a little bit of WD-40. It takes a tight firm squeeze on the outside to spread the tangs that lock it into place on the main intake pipe. And then a little bit of wiggling to pull it off. Next step is to remove the main cooling fan. This one's fitted with a regular viscous fan, not an electric one. On a supercharged vehicle, the threads are counterclockwise to remove. On a normally aspirated one, it's anti-clockwise to remove. So on the fan removal, the shroud is a half moon shaped piece. It has a screw, a quarter turn twist screw on one end. That loosens the main section of it. And then to get the other side unlocked out, it's actually a slide backwards towards the engine as opposed to a pull of any kind. Once that's removed, the main fan clip can be disconnected here. And then the main harness for the cooling fan can be removed. And then the fan can be taken out. The next step is to remove the belt off of the supercharger here from the tensioner here. We're going to actually remove this front pulley here, which is an idler pulley which will give us better access to the rear main drive belt which actually drives the water pump itself. The tensioner for that is right here and is turned towards the left to release the pressure from the belt. We'll pull the belt off, probably remove the tensioner so it gives us access to the screws at the back here which hold the water pump in place. Now with the first supercharger dri uh, drive belt removed, we're going to remove this pulley so it's going to give us more access to remove the water pump. Again, we'll probably end up having to remove the tensioner here so we can access all the hardware that holds the, belt, uh, the main water pump on. Okay, so removal of this idler pulley was a bit of a task. They can seize on and get be quite tight. We sprayed it with a uh, PB blaster and shocked it several times around the outer circumference and also pried gently on the back edge of the lip. It did take some working to get it off. It did come off, but as you can see, even the smallest amount of rust on the spindle here can cause it to stick on. The part is off. It'll get cleaned up on the main hub and on the main spindle. So hopefully it's easier to remove and reinstall at future dates. So with the belt removed off of the pulleys, the next step is to remove the tensioner here that obstructs a couple of pieces of hardware that needs removal from the front of the water pump to replace it. I generally leave the belt on in place to save time removing lots of other components whereas we're just going into the water pump area. So the coolant leak we can see now is quite exposed. The actual coolant is kind of solidified a little bit and almost turned to a gel. It appears to be coming from the back face of the water pump itself. There's a little bit of evidence up on the top here. I can see also. But you can see how it's been running down the front of the engine. So next step, removing the coolant hoses from the water pump itself. There is a little plastic elbow that goes in here. This is a little sleeve you have to keep pressure against while you pull out the little plastic L-shaped elbow out of here. It can be left attached but I like to disconnect them so it doesn't get damaged while I'm working on the vehicle. Next step is to remove the big hose. I have a tool here 
to slip in underneath the hose so I can remove the seal from between the hose and the actual water pump itself. So the water pump is held in place by four retaining screws. They're Torx headed and they're a T30 in size. It's always nice to use a little bit of an extension so you don't have to be crowded too tight into the, uh, into the engine area. I'm gonna put a ratchet on this to break them uh, loose and probably uh, spin them out with an air ratchet. So with all the four screws loosened and removed, the pump should pull right out, like that. And if you look carefully, we see the evidence of probably what looks like the gasket has been leaking around the water pump here. We have this hard or gelled coolant. Ooh. Oh, and also at the bottom of the water pump, probably out of the seep hole. The next step after removal of the water pump is to remove and replace this small plastic black bypass hose that actually goes from the water pump to the supercharger coolers, eh, water coolers on the intake manifold. It's done by giving it a quarter turn. As you can, you can see there's a half moon shaped plastic disc that locks it into place and then a gentle pull and it's out. You do have to ensure that in here it, there is a seal that goes on the pipe to the intercoolers which actually got stuck on the pipe. I'm going to go and remove it right now. In the kit that we sell, you get this new O-ring. That's actually on quite tight, so it's gonna need some help to get off. This is the seal that was stuck on the pipe that goes to the intercooler. They kind of get hot and glue themselves on a little bit. A little bit of leverage and it pops right off. So the next job is to remove any dirt debris, the gelled up coolant, as you can see in this area that was leaking from around the gasket. And of course we've got some old tree seeds that have managed to find their way into the engine area here. Wouldn't be nice just to remove it and clean it up a little bit. So this is the new water pump that we're going to install. It's an OE water pump. As you can see, it comes with the new gaskets, new hardware to install. This is where the plastic elbow goes that we removed from the old one. This is the new bypass piece of pipe that goes into the cooler pipe and then is turned a quarter turn to lock it into place. However, not forgetting the all important seal that needs to go on there first. Once it's on or during just before installation I like to put a little bit of lubricant around the main seal so it'll slide into the bypass pipe nice and easily. So the new seal is installed onto the bypass pipe that goes to the coolers in the intake manifold. Then the short by, uh, plastic bypass hose goes on to that. It can be a little bit firm push. So the bypass is hose is pushed on and as you can see this half moon disc has to go almost horizontal and then to lock it in place you give it a, qu a quarter turn so it can't slide off. Next is the install of the new water pump. I'm going to slightly lower it and locate it into place. It can be a bit, be a bit fiddly. So the new water pump is installed on. I'm actually going to tighten it up hand tight initially so everything is uh, comfortably fitted to the engine and then I'm going to do my final torque and then we're going to reinstall the coolant hoses. So here's the elbow, the plastic elbow hose for the small bypass hose that we took off earlier. It literally just pushes into place. You just spin it around to locate it to the right orientation. And then the new, the old hose gently has to be slid back over it, like so. Now to reinstall the tensioner, 
that I took off so we could access the water pump hardware goes get back against the block here there are locating dowels here and here which will go into already cut out holes here and here so the next step after installing the, the tensioner is to make sure the belt is on properly it routes around most all the outside of the v-belt pulley uh, pulleys around the crank back underneath around and over an idler here around the alternator and back over the top of the water pump So the idler pulley is reinstalled as you can see. I generally put it on loosely initially just so I can actually align the bolts to the back flange holes. If you're having difficulty with that, a nice short small old screwdriver will do that you place through one hole and place through the other hole just to get things started. Then you should, you know, you can be pretty much ensured you can start screwing in the screws and tightening up. I tighten them down evenly and squarely to make sure that the pulley goes and seats nice and flat against the back flange. All right, install of the next belt, which is the supercharger drive belt, goes around the main crank pulley, up around the tensioner, over the top of the idler here, and then around over the top of the supercharger drive, and back around the loop of the idler pulley that we just reinstalled. So we have the belt reinstalled back on the supercharger, around the idler, on the tensioner, around the main idler pulley. The pulley is now tight with the three screws. The next step is to reinstall the viscous fan and reconnect the electrical connector to it. Bearing in mind, again, with it being a supercharged engine, to retighten the, uh, the fan, it's a right hand thread to tighten. Whereas if it were normally aspirated, it's a left hand thread to tighten. So we now have the viscous fan screwed back on. It does, it can be a little tricky, so do take your time. Again, with it being the supercharged version, it's got a regular right hand thread to screw it back on, left hand to undo. Whereas the normal aspirated one, again, to put it back on, it's a left hand thread and a right hand thread to take off. Next is the electrical connector. Which locates in the fan shroud. And is obviously being a little tricky to install. Now to install the top part of the half moon shroud on the top of the radiator fan shroud. As you can see, it has a almost a full moon shape slot it sits into on the main shroud. It has to be slid in forwards towards the front of the car and then a quarter turn screw on the far side to lock it into place. Next install the plastic intake plenum. The only tricky thing about this is, is aligning the breather pipe that goes on here. My advice is to spray a little bit of penetrating oil on the pipe seal that clips onto here, which will aid pushing the pipe onto the main housing. And when it goes on firmly and securely, you'll hear it actually click into place. The intake plenum is all back on tight and secure. The clips are located properly holding the coolant lines for the coolant supercharger. Now we're going to just finish off by putting the two intake pipes on and we're going to start refilling the cooling system.
and we're going to start bleeding, start the car up and start bleeding the cooling system and getting it up to normal operating temperature. It's time to refill the reservoir with coolant. To do this properly, of course, remove the trim from the top of the reservoir because we're going to need to access the bleed screw which is actually kind of hidden away a little bit down here. We fill the reservoir until it's full, start the car up, let it idle and then crack the bleeder loose until we start to see coolant slowly bubble out. Then close off the, res the bleeder and continue to run the engine at an idle until temperature starts to rise and then probably put the cap back on and bring it up to a high idle and constantly keep an eye on the temperature gauge so the, up, the gauge comes up to normal operating temperature. If it happens to creep above that, switch the vehicle off, and let it sit for a good couple of hours to hopefully poss and possibly burp out any air bubbles that might be caught in the cooling system, causing it to perhaps get hot before it should. As you can see, the air is starting to bubble out of the bleeder. I'd like to keep it open until I see a, maybe a good steady flow of coolant coming through. It may take a while so you do have to just keep an eye on it. So at this point now we have the cooling system bled out. The coolant level is at the correct level, at the max level in the, re uh, in the reservoir. It may need, once the vehicle sits for a few hours with the engine off, it may need topping off as any air that might be possibly trapped in the cooling system may burp through into the reservoir and it may lower the coolant level down to a point where it may turn the light on. So it was always worth a check of the coolant level after it sat for two to three hours and cooled off a little and maybe topped off. So if you find yourself in need of a new water pump and your water pump's leaking, please give us a call at 1-800-533-2210 and talk to one of our friendly sales agents and they'll be able to set you up with a new water pump and any other needed parts you need to get the vehicle back on the road.